Uh, greetings, man fans. All right, so this is day three of chapter 7a, and there's not a note sheet for this one, but I'm just going to give you some um, some of the topics here. It's really two topics. We have zero exponents, so when the exponent is zero, and negative exponents, when the exponent is like five to the negative third, or actually the negative third power. Okay? So let's, uh, let's first talk about um, zero exponents. All right, so basically any term to the zero power equals one. That's it. That's any power to or any term to the zero power is one. So if I give you five to the zero power, that's one. X to the zero power, that's one. Okay, please don't say it's equal to zero. This is a common mistake that kids make. Is they say it's like five to the zero power is zero. All right, it's not the case. It's equal to one. Really, really important. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about parentheses here too. So if I have negative four to the zero power versus negative four to the zero power, this one's equal to one because you're doing the whole negative four. You're doing everything there is equal to, to the zero power is one. What you need to understand is when you have an exponent, whatever that's next to it gets affected by it. So truly that negative four, it's just four to the zero power. So it's negative and that's one. So the answer is for this one is negative one. All right, but again, when you have parentheses around it, then the whole thing, the whole negative four is raised to the zero power. So that's equal to positive one, okay? So I can give you something like, um, you know, negative 5,263 x to the 17th, y to the 29th, to the zero power. That would equal one, okay? But here, let me just show you a couple other things. If I said five x to the zero power, that's not equal to one. Now this is equal to one, but five x to the zero, the only thing that's touching the zero power is the x. So it would be saying five times one, which is five, okay? Very, very important. All right, so what only the things that touch it. So let's, you know, so if I said 7x to the 0, y to the 5th, the answer would be 7, and that's again 1, so it's 7y to the 5th power. That would be the answer. Okay? Very, very important. Okay, so anything to the 0 power is 1. Got to remember that. All right, so... Let's keep going here. Um, negative exponents. Okay, so an example would be x to the negative fourth. That's a negative exponent. So here's the rule for that. Um, I'm going to say you're going to move that x to the negative fourth to the other side of the fraction. And I know a lot of you are like, well, Mr. Gross, I don't have another side of the fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fraction. And I can do that over one, right? If you're, you know, 15 years old and I want to create your your age as a fraction, you would just say 15 over one. So I'm going to say x to the fourth over one. Uh, so let me show you a couple. Well, I'll, let me do the example and then I'll give you the rules. So x to the fourth over one. So what the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the other side of the fraction. So I'm going to move that to the bottom of the of the fraction and then I'm going to change this from a negative to a positive and that's my answer. Okay, that's all you do. So the first step is you move to other side of the fraction and the second step is you uh, change the exponent to positive. Okay? Two things. So move it to the other side of the fraction and you change the exponent to positive. Now notice this was on top and I moved to the bottom. Well if it's on the bottom and it's negative, you move it to the top. It's that simple. Alright? So if I give you um, 8 to the negative 2 power, first thing you're going to do is move it to the other side of the fraction. So let's make it a fraction and you're going to say 1 over 8 and then it make it that positive. So I did two things. 
Okay, let me highlight those, right? First thing I do is I move to the other side of the fraction. So I moved it down there. It's a big arrow. So I moved it down there. And then the next thing I did is I made this uh, positive. So 8 squared, you put it in your calculator, I don't care. So 8 squared is 64. And that's your answer, 1 over 64. Okay. So let's let's look at um, let's look at a few more examples. Okay. So um, let me start out with one over x to the negative three. So it's now it's in the denominator. So it's easy. You just move it to the other side of the fraction. So it's x and then make a positive. So it's x cubed. I know a lot of you guys want to do x cubed over 1, but again, try not to do that over 1. It's like if I ask you how old you are and you go, oh, I'm 15 over 1. Like, nobody really says that, right? You say you're 15. So if it's x cubed over 1, it's just x cubed. All right? Let's do a couple more. So if I have x squared, y to the negative fourth, what's got a negative exponent? Just like when we had a zero exponent, the only thing that it gets affected is whatever touches the exponent. Okay, so this is the only thing that's affected by that negative 4. So you make it as a fraction, and then it's x squared over y to the fourth, and that's your answer. Okay? So uh, same thing with, let's do uh, four, to the, 4 to the negative 2 raised to the third power. You do everything the same as before, math fans. So you remember you multiply these together, so it's 4 to the negative sixth power. Now, your final answer, this is important. So the final answer basically has no negative exponents. Okay? Very important, very important. No negative exponents. So 4 to the negative 6, you're going to write that as 1 over 4 to the 6th power. Okay? That's kind of a big number, so I'm going to leave it as 1 over 4 to the 6th. Okay? So if I give you x to the 4th power to the negative 3rd power, that's going to be x to the negative 12th power, which is 1 over x to the 12th power. Change it to positive and move to the other side of the fraction. Okay, so that's your answer. Okay, not bad. So let's do, I got, I got a bunch more examples to do with you guys. Um, how about 10 to the negative 5th power times 10 to the 7th power? Well, remember, same rules. So it's going to be negative 5 plus 7, so it's 10 squared, which is 100. So you didn't really have to do a lot with that because the negative and the positive, you went up with a positive answer. But what about this one? 10 to the 5th times 10 to the negative 7th. Well, do you guys agree 10 or 5 minus 7? Do you use your calculator? I don't care. It's 10 to the negative 2. So that's 1 over 10 squared, and that's 1 over 100. So you can't really put this in your calculator, guys, because if you just put that directly in your calculator, uh, you're going to actually get a decimal. You'll get 0 0.01, and I don't want that. I don't want any decimals. I want all fractions. So the way you do this is you basically just do 10 squared. And again, if you do that on your calculator, you get 100, so then it's 1 over 100. Okay? So again, very, very important. No negative exponents in your final answer. Very, very, very important. Okay, let's do a couple more examples. 4 to the negative 1 to the negative 2 power. So what do you do? You multiply those together. So it's negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. 4 squared is 16. All right. So again, what's 4 to the negative 2 power? It's 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. And it's your final answer. OK. How about 2x to the negative 3rd power? Well, again, what's touching that exponent is just the x. So the 2 stays on top. So put a fraction underneath there, you know, over 1. The 2 stays where it's at, and the x cubed goes to the bottom. And that's your answer. So I can have this one, 5x to the negative 3rd power, y to the 6th power, z to the negative 7th power. Anything that has a negative exponent goes to the other side of the fraction. So you have 5 on top, y to the 6th on top. On the bottom is x to the 3rd and z to the seventh. And that's your answer. OK? So anything that touches the negative exponent goes to the other side of the fraction. Um, anything that doesn't stays where it's at. All right, let's do a couple more here. Um, how about 
uh, 2 over x to the negative fourth. Okay, so what do you do with that? You move that to the top. The 2 stays there. 2 doesn't have a negative exponent. So the answer is 2x to the fourth. All right. What about 3xy to the negative 2 power? So truly, everything has it, uh, that's inside of the parentheses gets affected by that exponent. So it's 3 to the negative 2, x to the negative 2, and y to the negative 2. So do you guys agree they all go to the other side of the fraction? So it's 1 over 3 squared, x squared, y squared. So 3 squared is, of course, 9. So it's 1 over 9, x squared, y squared. And that's your answer. Okay, what's 1 over x to the negative 7? Move to the other fraction, x to the 7th. What about x to the negative 4th over x to the negative 7th? Or sorry, y to the negative 7th. So they each go to the other side of the fraction and become positive. So the y goes on top, y to the 7th, and the x goes down below x to the 4th. And that's your answer. Okay, not bad. Let's do, I just want to do a few more examples with you guys. Okay, so let's combine a couple of them together here. Let's do a few more examples. If I said 5x to the 0, y to the negative 3, z to the 10th, what happens? Well, do you guys agree this goes to 1? So you can ignore that. Okay, this goes to the other side of the fraction, and that stays where it's, where it's at. So my answer is 5z to the 10th over y cubed. That's it. Okay? So these really aren't that bad. Again, it's it's a matter of just being careful when you have a negative exponent, moves to the other side of the fraction. When you have a positive exponent, it stays where it's at. Um, so let's see. We'll, can we do a couple more here? How about uh, 3 to the negative 1 power to the negative 2 power? So what do you do? Multiply those together, and that becomes 3 to the positive 2, which is 9. So that's kind of nice. Nothing actually happened. The had almost like double negative there, and it was nothing, at least nothing happened. Okay? Um, x to the negative third times x. Well, remember, when there's just an x, put a 1 there. So you get x, when you add those together, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and the answer is 1 over x squared. Okay. Um, two. Let's say negative two x to the third y to the negative fourth z to the zero to the third power. All right. So remember, what you're gonna do. You're gonna say negative two cubed x cubed cubed y to the negative fourth cubed and z to the 0 cubed. Alright, so lots of parentheses here. You type in negative 2 cubed in your calculator. Okay, parentheses are important, so you end up getting negative 8. That's x to the ninth, 3 times 3. That's y to the negative 12th. And that's z, 0 times 3 is still 0. So of course, any, it, this is 1, right? z to the 0 is 1. So that's why it's still 1, because 1 cubed is still 1. All right, so anyway, let's, our final answer then is negative 8 x to the ninth over, because that's that cancels out, and then y to the twelfth on the bottom. Okay? So that is your answer, negative 8 x to the ninth over y to the twelfth. All right, let's try here just a couple more, and then, uh, and then it'll, that'll be it. How about uh, x to the seventh over y to the negative third power? Okay, so that y thing of third power is the only thing that gets affected, comes up. So you end up getting x to the seventh times y to the third power. Okay? How about uh, 5 over 7x to the negative fourth power, z to the tenth power? So what's the only thing that comes up? Just this. So it's going to be 5x to the fourth power that comes up, and the rest of it stays where it's at. And there's your answer. Okay? Not, I don't think it's too bad. So one last one, and then we'll be done. Uh, 
1 over parentheses 2, no, I'll say negative 2, x squared to the negative fourth power. All right, so it's 1 over negative 2 to the negative fourth power and x squared to the negative fourth power. Okay, and we're going to move that to the top, so it's going to be negative 2 to the positive fourth power. And um, again, we can just move, if you want, just move this up and say, here, I'm going to actually, that's almost complicated. Let's do this one first. Do you guys agree that's x to the negative eighth? All right, so I'm going to move that to the top. It becomes x to the eighth. I think that's easier to deal, deal with that way. And what's negative 2 to the fourth? Put in your calculator, put the parentheses in there, and you end up getting. 16. So the answer is 16x to the eighth power. Okay, so that's it, math fans. 16 minutes of this lesson. Hopefully, you guys are good to go with this. And uh, remember, anything to the zero power is one. Anything with a negative exponent moves to the other side of the fraction. All right, that's it, math fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.